Welcome to the Lead Discipleship course. I'm Shannon, one of your student ministries pastors here at Church of the Resurrection. We are starting out this course with two sessions on love and identity. Now you might think, huh, that's weird. What do love and identity have to do with leadership? But as we will find out over the next few weeks, leadership starts with love, loving God and loving others. And to be better leaders, we also need to learn a little bit more about ourselves, as well as those around us. Back in 1992, probably before any of you were even born, a marriage and family therapist named Dr. Gary Chapman wrote a book called The Five Love Languages, The Secret to Love That Lasts. Well, that book ended up becoming a huge hit and selling millions of copies. I first read this book when I was in college in an introductory sociology class called Marriage and Family Systems. Now, married people read his book and really benefited from it, but Dr. Chapman also adapted his book for managers and employees in the workplace, for parents to better relate to their kids, and even for teenagers like you. But what made his ideas such a success? I mean, it shouldn't be that hard just to love people, right? Well, through the five love languages, he discovered this concept that we all give and receive love in different ways. What may seem super sweet and loving to me may just come across as weird or even inconsiderate and hurtful to you. But at the same time, I need to show you love in a way that you will understand and recognize. In fact, there are five different ways that people give and receive love. The five love languages are words of affirmation, quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. So let me give you an example of what this looks like. My mother-in-law is a huge gift giver. Christmas is her favorite holiday. She goes all out on Christmas presents for her kids and especially for her grandkids. Now to me, buying Christmas presents for everyone in my husband's extended family is really stressful and it's not really enjoyable but I've learned to embrace it anyway because it's a way that my mother-in-law shows love to her family and it's also how she receives love as well and how they all give love to one another. My mother-in-law's love language is, is receiving gifts. Now, if I simply decided not to give Christmas gifts one year, she would feel unloved and unvalued. But for me, my favorite part about Christmas is spending time all together as a family, especially after the hectic craziness of the holiday season. I love going on vacations with my husband or even just sitting at home and talking with him at the end of the workday because my love language is quality time. Now we all have one primary love language of how we best receive love in our friendships and in our families, if we can all learn how those around us receive love, we can actually improve the quality of our relationships. Now before your next session, be sure to go to fivelovelanguages.com and take the love language quiz. Select the option in the quiz that says, I am a teenager, so that you can get the most customized experience. And then take a screenshot of your results or you can print them off and bring them to your next lead session you might be surprised what you learn about your, yourself and of course, what you learn about your other group members too. Now, what does all this have to do with our identity? Our unique love language shows that God created us as diverse and extraordinary individuals. We are each unique and special in our own ways and how we give, show, receive, and extend love but our love language profiles show that we are all created by God for love. Now the way I show love might look different than the way you show love, but we all have this desire to give and receive love to those around us. So let's learn now about how we can extend and receive love better together.